Hey everyone, I'm not Dan, but in this video we're going to be learning about saturation. It's... Welcome back. Alright, so we are talking about saturation today. Now saturation is simply just referring to how much solute is actually dissolved in the solvent and there are three levels of saturation. Now the first level is called unsaturated. And an unsaturated solution is one where there's still room left in the solvent. Like for example, this beaker of salt water. Right? This is the same beaker that we've been using in all the, the previous videos. Now how do I know that this is unsaturated? Well, very simply because I know that there's salt dissolved in here and you can't see any particles settling out at the bottom. Which means that if I put more salt in here, all of that salt would dissolve. Okay, that's unsaturated. Now the next level is saturated. Now saturated means that is it. That is the maximum amount of solute that could actually dissolve in that particular solvent. So let me show you an example of that. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to add more salt in here. I'm going to show you what a saturated solution of salt looks like. All right, so I'm going to give this a couple minutes to try and dissolve as much as we can, and I'll see you here real quick. Okay, now everything that can dissolve has dissolved, and we now have a saturated solution of salt in this water. How do I know it's saturated? Well, very simply because, as you can see, there's still salt sitting at the bottom of this beaker. That is pretty much the identifying characteristic of a saturated solution. Everything that can dissolve has dissolved, and that water is now completely full, right? There's no more room at the end. And everything else that tries to get in is going to then just settle out at the bottom. Now, the danger here in identifying a saturated solution is that sometimes you can look at this and think, oh, I have a solute here that just doesn't dissolve in water. So that's part of the reason why I chose salt, because we all know that salt dissolves in water. And so this, right, so then there, there's no way that we can uh, misconstrue this as being um, something that doesn't dissolve, because we know. So this is saturated. Now the third type of saturation is called super saturation. Now for that, come join me over at my desk. Hey, so I am up close and personal here to give you a nice close-up shot of this. This is a super saturated solution. Now, on the surface, it looks pretty normal, except that a super saturated solution is one that has dissolved more solute than it really should be possible. And as such, they can be quite uh, unstable. <laughs> so let me show you here, get a nice little close-up shot, get this going, and you can see all of that solute right there is completely coming out of the solution. Right? It's all solidifying. This is what a super saturated solution does. It's actually pretty cool. Or actually, in this case, it's actually pretty warm. Um, it gives off a lot of heat as it's coming out of the solution. Now, how do you actually make a super saturated solution? Or how can I reset this? Well, it's all about temperature. So if you put this into boiling water and you heat it up really high, then at that higher temperature, all the solute should be able to dissolve. And then you take it out and you let it very slowly uh, come back to the way it was originally. Okay, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to put it into my hot water right here and then we'll uh, check on it in about 20 to 30 minutes and then we'll see how it's doing. Now for you guys, do the magic of editing, it will go very fast. Alright, check you later. Okay, so about 20 minutes has passed now, so I'm going to reach in here, I'm going to pull out a little packet here and show you right up close everything has dissolved again and that's 
how a super saturated solution works. Now, there is one more way that we can identify saturated, unsaturated, and super saturated. And in order to do that, we're gonna need to jump on into the computer real quick. All right, so let's go. Okay, so what we're looking at here is called a solubility curve. All right, on the x-axis down here, we've got temperature. On the y-axis up here, this is the grams of the solute. So basically, it's the solubility of that substance. Now, the only thing that's somewhat difficult about this is the fact that there's obviously a lot of different lines. So just like when you're, you know, reading, you know, a chapter in a book, you have to be able to use your comprehension skills to filter out all of the unnecessary information and be able to focus on what you are specifically looking at. Okay, so for what I'm going to do here, we're just going to look at the NH4Cl line, the ammonium chloride. So this line right here. Now, anything that is on the line, right? So if a question is saying, ooh, 50 grams of NH4Cl at 50 degrees Celsius, well, that right there is on the line. This is saturated, okay? Now, anything above the line, so any data point up here is above the line, that is a super saturated solution. And then hopefully you can kind of see where I'm going with this. Any data point that is below the line down here, this is unsaturated. Okay, anything beyond that really is just being able to read a graph. Here's your x-axis, there's your y-axis, find your data point, move on. Okay, the only new thing about this is that the line itself is saturated, above the line is super saturated, below the line is unsaturated. Okay, now there's only one other thing that I want to point out real quick here. If you'll notice that for most of these lines, as we go left to right, you'll see that they all increase. Well, that's because these are solid solutes. For solids, when you increase the temperature, they increase in solubility. However, for substances like NH3, you can see there's a decrease in solubility. That's because this is a gas. Okay, so for solids, there's an increase in solubility when you increase temperature. For gases, it's the exact opposite. When you increase the temperature, there's a decrease in solubility. All right, this is why it is much better to drink a cold soda rather than a warm soda, right? Because the warm soda doesn't have as much carbon dioxide in it. All the carbonation is gone because it's a higher temperature, less solubility for that gas. Okay, it's really that simple. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you have any further questions, please be sure to comment below. And I will check you later in the next video. All right, remember, I'm not Dan, and neither are you. So check you later. Waiting on a train.